Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will look at competitive technical analysis that will help us define the commercializable idea. In my previous video, I discussed how a good idea has to deliver the best solution to a burning problem of a large number of customers that you can potentially reach. Here, we will look at some open source tools and techniques for doing some technical analysis to get there. To illustrate this, we will use lithium ion battery recycling as an example and do a quick Google search on the challenges. Let's look at some links here. This one is from Chemical and Engineering News. Okay, here are the challenges listed. Here is the composition and how we can improve the method. Okay, let's go back. Let's look at one more. Okay, this one from MRS. This one gives a broader overview including some transportation issues as well and collection. So supply chain related issues. Now by going over these kind of documents, we have a broad overview of the challenges in this space. Let's dive a bit deeper into scholarly publications. These include journal articles, conference proceedings and other technical documents that most academic researchers are familiar with. There are sources like Google Scholar and ResearchGate that most researchers are familiar with. Beyond that, there is Microsoft Academic Search which gives some analytics like top institutions, authors, journals and conferences and some other filters. The open source tool that is most useful for technical analysis though is the Lens. It is provided by an Australian non-profit organization, Cambia. Let's take a closer look at what we can do with it. So we go to the site and type our search under scholarly works. You can see 1680 documents of which 155 have been cited by patents. We can narrow down the search or look at prolific authors, institutions and the countries they come from. Top journals in the space and conferences. We can look at what are the fields of study under which this work is happening and keywords that authors are using. Let's look at some analysis. Here we can look at again top institutions. If you see this scholarly works over time, you see most of the work happened in the last 20 years. And it's around material science and of course lithium batteries. Okay, most active authors. Okay, here are the scholarly works cited by patents. Let's look at one of them. This one is not related to recycling, neither is this. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, it's a review article. 34 citing patents. Other scholarly works that have referred to this paper and recommendations based on this particular article we are looking at. Let's go back to analysis, see what else we can do with it. Oh, there is citing patents. Okay, let's pick one in this field. 
Okay, that one is in the field. Okay, it's by a company. Good. Let's see what they do. Okay, seems to be in contract research and maybe IP development and licensing. So here is one company we identified in this space which we can review to understand their business and business model. We also found out some influential authors and some influential works in this space. Now let's take a look at the patents. There are Google patents and free patents that most of us are familiar with. We can do a quick search for a single patent or quickly review the specifications, claims and see some related information and citation. Google patents recently also started providing some analytics. There are patent search tools provided by different patent offices like PatentScope from Vipo, Espasnet from EPO, Public Pair from USPTO and InPass from India. Most of these tools have very minimal analytics capabilities. So this is where the lens is quite powerful. Let's go back and look at it once again. So we type the search string, this time under patent search. thrown up more than 13,000 patents. Again, we can look at, uh, you know, prolific inventors and how they are grouped according to different classification code systems. Let's go under analysis. Hey, here is a company that doesn't make sense. No, doesn't make sense, so let's remove it. Okay. Go back to analysis. Okay, here is grouping of them according to classification codes related to battery recycling of batteries. This one, lithium accumulators. rocking chair batteries, advanced materials and nanocompositions. Okay, this one has very few. Let's see what that is. Not quite related. So let's filter that out. So this data cleanup is important so that we can, you know, get to what we want faster. Okay, now let's look at some universities, University of California. There seems to be one company in this space. More in advanced materials than material recycling or battery recycling. Let's remove those. And look at another one, MIT. There are two companies. Let's look at this one. They do have recycling of batteries for solar cells. Let's see what they do. More in advanced chemistry and materials. Let's remove that. Okay. 
same pattern showing up now let's see what they do cell manufacturing for easy recyclability okay okay let's try something else this time filter it out based on the most common cpc code There is an individual inventor with 10 patents. Let's look at what that is. Okay, it seems to be a company here associated with him. Okay, this one is offering advanced battery recycling solutions. Alright, I hope you got a flavor for what you can do with these kind of tools to understand the technical landscape of the field you want to work in. So within the span of about 10 minutes or so, we found three companies with three different models. One in IP and contract research, one in cell manufacturing for recyclability, and the third one, the recycling methods. And we also found that there are two startups associated with MIT, A123 Systems and 24M Tech that are probably collaborating to recycle batteries for solar cells. So by digging deeper and analyzing along these lines, you can fill the details of key technical resources, geographies, and technical players in this space. As you see, there are different tools for different tasks. As you use the tools and techniques, check the completeness of the data sources for the field you are analyzing. Most importantly, what we have seen today is different kinds of data and some techniques to gain insights from them. All these insights need to come together in defining the action, which is an idea for a commercializable technology that can create impact. The story doesn't quite end there, of course. You need an effective way to keep track of these resources as you progress in your development process. One of the useful, although a bit outdated tool today, is the RSS. Most journals let you get an RSS feed of their table of content. Science Daily is a website where you can get RSS news feeds on a variety of topics of interest. They publish information related to important research developments in these areas. And yes, there is one on battery tech. If you set up an account with Vipo's Patent School, you can set up RSS feeds for your search stream. Espasnet used to have this feature, which is still available in their classic site, but seems to be gone from their newer website. Several research news websites, research labs, universities and companies regularly tweet and you can follow these as well. Then there is LinkedIn, where you can follow research labs, universities, companies, people, and good old email subscriptions for newsletters and Google Alert. Of course, depending on how many sources you are monitoring, it can get to be a full-time job. This is where aggregators like NetVibes can help pool all the information in one place for effective monitoring. To summarize, in this video, we looked at some tools and techniques for analyzing technical information at the idea stage and monitoring it. Thank you.